Hello friends and welcome to another one of my videos. My name is Josh and today I'm going to teach you how to play Before You Go by Louis Capaldi on the piano. Now of course I know that a lot of you are just going to try and watch the preview that I just played and use that to learn the song but let me encourage you to stick around for the tutorial because that is where I really teach you what is going on in the song and even talking about different ways that you can play certain sections to make it a little easier for you. My goal here on this channel is to help teach and inspire people to play the piano. So if you want to support me on that mission, be sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this and leave a comment below of what song you wanna see next. Also check out my TikTok at Josh Lang Piano if you want even more content. All right, let's dive right into this song. All right, so we're gonna break this song down into three main sections, the verse, the chorus, and the bridge. You'll see that the verse is pretty easy, the chorus, it's a bit harder, but then the bridge is very similar to the chorus. So first off, we are in the key of E flat. So one of the most important things to understand in order to play this song is that this song is in the time signature 6-8 meaning that we have six eighth notes every measure. Really, it means instead of counting one, two, three, four, like usual, we're gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. And if you count that as you play, it'll make learning this song a lot easier. So let's start with the verse. So in the verse, we're gonna start on this E flat. And what we're gonna be doing is we're just gonna be playing an E flat in the left hand and an E flat in the right hand and we're just gonna alternate them in our time signature of six, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Like that. Uh, so we do this a few times and then we move down in the left hand to a C. And then we keep the right hand exactly the same. One, two, three, four, five, six. 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 Again, we move down in the left hand to the A flat. And lastly, we're gonna move up to this B flat chord, which really we're just gonna have a B flat. And then in the right hand, we're gonna start with the E flat like we had before. So really it's a B flat suspended chord like this. And then it'll resolve down to our normal B flat chord, you'll see. So we'll start like this with the E flat and then move down to the D. And then we repeat. So some things to note during this section, listen to the song and see if you can hear where the accents are in the playing. I know it's gonna be hard because you're trying to match a guitar part on the piano, which is a little hard, but uh, one thing I like to do to make it sound a little more natural and make it easier to kind of keep track of where you are is I accent the one and the four when counting to six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
And it's not a big accent, it's just a slight enough accent that it's helping me count and keep track. Like that. So in the song preview, I showed you this other thing you could do as well, which just sounds like this. And so what's going on there is when we're counting to six, every time we are on four, so one, two, three, four, five, six, we're adding this G as well. And that pattern will just continue like that throughout all of them. So what I usually like to do is play the entire first verse with just the E flat in the right hand, but then after you get to the chorus, when you play the second verse, that's when I start to add this pattern with the G. And that kind of matches with the original song. All right, let's move on to the chorus. So the chorus looks hard, I'll admit, and it does take a little time, but it's a very similar pattern throughout the whole chorus and the bridge as well. So if you can get that pattern down, you'll get it in no time. What we're gonna do in the left hand is we're just gonna have octaves for every chord. So here we have E flats. And you'll notice for that every chord, we're actually gonna keep this E flat and this G throughout every chord. So first, before we get onto the pattern we're gonna play, let's walk through every chord. First, we have this chord, E flat. E flat's in the left hand, B flat, E flat, and G in the right hand. Then we're gonna move down to this B flat chord, which is B flat's in the left hand, and then we're gonna have an F here in the thumb, and then play the E flat and G again. Now I realize that this is a bit of a stretch for some people, and I will talk about that later in the video, some things you can do to get around that. Another thing, I know that this isn't exactly a B flat chord, because we have this E flat, it's really like a B flat suspended chord with an added six. But I'm just gonna be calling them by their simplest names for the sake of simplicity, I guess. Moving on to our next chord, it's gonna be a C minor chord, so we'll have C's in the left hand, G, E flat, and G in the right hand. And then lastly, now I know most people can definitely not reach this, but we'll talk about that. A flats in the left hand, E flat, E flat, and G in the right hand. That is our A flat chord. All right, so now let's talk about the pattern we're gonna play. In the left hand, it's gonna be very easy. We're just gonna play every time we change chords. So you just have to play it once, like that. Now in the right hand, this is where the pattern comes in. Once again, we're gonna be counting to six, and that's gonna make things easier. So we're gonna start with the thumb every time, and we're gonna count this. One, two, three, four, five, six. We go thumb, middle, thumb, top, thumb, middle, like that. We do that for each chord four times. And then we change chords. Moving on to the next chord, the B flat. C minor. And then A flat. And here we have a slight change. Instead of playing in the right hand, this same thing for all four times, we're gonna play this twice. And then on the third and fourth time, we're gonna move this G down to an F, so it's gonna sound like this. After this, we go back to the start and repeat. So on and so forth, we get to the end, like this. And then another change, we're gonna play a B flat chord again, but we're gonna have B flats in the left hand, F, E flat, and then F here in the right hand, and we're just gonna play the same pattern. So now, if you get that chorus down, first of all, great job, amazing work. Um, and another thing that I added, as I showed in the preview, is this. So 
So really all that you're gonna be doing is every time you play this G here in the right hand, you're gonna be adding this B flat, which is kind of hard to reach. So what I like to do is take my left hand and just go across like that. You can use this just in the second chorus or you can use it throughout. You cannot use it at all. It's up to you. All right, last but not least, we have the bridge. First, let's go over the chords. We start with our C minor, just like before, then to A flat, like before, E flat, like before, and then B flat, same as before, then back to C minor, back to A flat, and then we're gonna go to this B flat here with the E flat and the F in the right hand like this. And what we're gonna do is in the right hand, we're just gonna play the same pattern that we already know. So what we're gonna do in the left hand is a little different. Again, we're gonna play octaves, but then every three beats, we're gonna repeat this top note. So it's gonna sound like this. Instead of playing this pattern in the right hand four times every time now, we're only gonna play it twice. So it'll sound like this. All right, that's all the sections for this song that you have to learn. Now, what to do about the stretching in the right hand. So I've come up with three different ways that you can play this if you want it to sound as similar to the original as possible, but your hands just aren't big enough. So the first one is just playing it like the original. So one tip that I have for you if you have smaller hands is to instead of having your hand shape be pretty much static the whole time and not moving, what I would do is kind of bounce back and forth and that will help you not have to stretch as far. So like this, or like this maybe. You can even use your pinky up here like this. So you don't have to reach as far. The second method, which I think is probably the easiest, is to substitute this note that you're playing in the thumb. So we can start off with the E flat chord. That one's pretty easy, you should be able to reach that. But then on the B flat chord, you can try to reach this, but if you can't, you can substitute it with, say, just another B flat. This isn't quite as close to the original, but it still sounds good. For the C minor chord, play this, but if you can't reach, just play a C with the thumb. And lastly, this chord, you can play an A flat instead or a C even, it might sound like this. Just find something that works for you. The last method I think is pretty tricky and I haven't even got it down, but if you wanna play it like the original but there's no way you can reach, you can play it like this. So what's happening there is I'm playing the first note exactly the same, but then as I move up in the right hand, I'm gonna use my left hand to play the right hand thumb note every time. Then I'm just playing the E flat and the G in the right hand. Like that. Again, find whichever method works best for you. All right, that does it for this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. If there was some part of that tutorial that was a little confusing for you, let me know down in the comments below. And if there's another song that you would like to see a tutorial for, put that in the comments as well. And have a wonderful rest of your day. See ya.